Ready? Once again. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to the June meeting of the Laconia Zoning Board of Adjustment. And with that, have the roll call, please. R. Mayhew. Here. Um, Suzanne Perley. Here. Ori Gibbs. Here. Mike Foote. Here. And Steve Bogert. Here. With the Planning Director, Dean Tripp Edlin. And I, Robert Moore, will be doing the minutes. And let the record indicate we have a quorum. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go over the minutes. Recording secretary, staff and attendance. Uh, minutes. Everybody have a chance to review the minutes. Yes, sir. Any uh, additions, uh, corrections? One. Okay. On the walkthrough last time up at uh, Pomsey's, Robert Mora was in attendance, but it's not not named on the in the minutes. Okay. okay. We can add that to the minutes. Any other additions? Uh, all those in favor? Uh, like the motion to accept. As amended. Yep. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Yep. It's all passed. Okay. Uh, we'll go right down into it. We have no extensions, we have no continuations, so we'll move into the public hearings and the purpose of this agenda section is for the board to have a presentation from the applicant and open a public hearing for the public to provide input. The board may also deliberate the application, decide, and conduct a final void vote at this time. So, with that being said, uh, we'll start with the application 2018-0007-53 Sanborn Street. Applicant is requesting a variance to build a new garage 22 feet by 26 feet that would extend into the side setback an additional one foot. Would the applicant please come forward, introduce yourself for the record, and tell us how we might help you. I'm William Bedard. And, Good uh, evening. Hi. Um, the garage, my existing garage I have now is basically falling down. Uh, so we just want to tear it down, the rest of it, and put a new one up. Uh, it, this one needs to be a little bigger than the existing garage simply because I can barely get a car in. And, um, you know, you try and get in and I can't even shut the door. So I'm asking Shut the door or open the door? The, well, the doors are like, it's not an overhead door. They're like a barn door, and it, there's just not enough room. So basically, you're making it a little longer? A little longer. I'm, I'm okay. looking for six feet longer and a foot wider on the um, uh, side that we're asking for the variance. Is there a floor in the garage now? There is a concrete floor, yes. And that would predicate why you're going to use the same footprint to base off? Um, no, the, 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 the new one will be, as I said, a foot wider than the old one and six feet longer uh, than the old one. Uh, but it, the, the concrete floor that's in the old one now is on, it's a floating slab type of thing. Are That's, you going to use that or remove it? No, we're going to remove it and, and put new concrete down. Will there be a second floor on this garage? No. Okay, so there won't be any living space of any kind? Absolutely not. The garage. <coughs> no. There won't even be storage up there. And, and the, oh, sorry. the garage doors will face from where the house is or face out towards the street? The street? They're going to face, it'll face towards the street. Same as it does now. And if you're going to relay the pad, is there any reason why it can't be laid in a conforming way? Thank you. That was my question. I, I don't follow you. What do you mean? Bring it 
bring uh, instead of right. extending in keep continuing to extend into the setback move the whole thing over move it back since you're since you're picking up the, the slab anyway slide it over so that you don't have to need the variance to extend into the setback yeah I know what you mean but if I do that I won't be able to get anything into it if I have a fence there on that side I also have a deck on that side okay. I would have to tear down so my deck tear down the fence in order to get yeah. a car to swing through there That's, to do it. That was, that was just what I was wondering why we were, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's only a foot here we're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, not. so if you're going to do everything. Yeah. Just a formality. formality. We'll try. I just wanted, we'll try. To, just wanted to know. <laughs> no, it would be great if it didn't have to yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Any other Next questions thing. of the applicant at the moment? There being none, I'm going to open it up to public and ask if anybody from the public wishes to speak on speak for or against this application please come forward and introduce yourself for the record let the record indicate no one from the public wish to speak for or against this application therefore I bring it back to the board for questions <coughs> There being no questions, any closing comments, sir? Um, no, I just appreciate a building permit. <laughs> <laughs> you may I have it to get going. <laughs> you may have a seat. I'm, with that, I'm going to close it to the public and bring it to the board for discussion. I went over the other day and took a look at it, and it looks reasonable to me. Yeah, my, yeah, my only question had been answered, and I thought it was probably because of the way the, the house was situated. In relation to the garage anyway so yeah I, it's very reasonable minimal incursion so we feel that it's not going to have an impact I of any type it's, and it's not contrary to any it's of not the contrary to public public good public welfare and it's not going to adversely affect the property values mm -hmm. of anything around it as a matter of fact put improving the garage will Improve help the, improve, improve the property. Values. I think it will improve it too because yeah. all the houses on that street are well kept. And yeah, nice. it will. It'll really improve the look of the property. And, and, and the hardship is just the placement of the, the house on the lot. With the deck and with everything, deck, yeah. with pre-existing deck and everything. Mm. Yeah, I okay. think it's a very reasonable request. So, with that, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion. Well, I'll make pretty a motion. Pretty much set it up already yeah, I think for we you. Did pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will make a motion to approve application 2018-0007 uh, for 53 Sanborn Street to um, locate the new to build a new garage and locate it uh, one foot farther into the side setback than the current garage is. He's extending the garage uh, one foot wider into the side setback and it will be uh, six feet longer. Um, the variance is not contrary to the public interest, uh, and the spirit of what the ordinance is observed. Um, it permits the um, applicant to construct a garage that will accommodate his vehicles, and um, it also improves the um, appearance of the neighborhood. Um, the val and so the value of the surrounding properties will not be diminished. Um, and uh, the hardship in this case is the uh, location of the garage with regard to the house and the structures on it. So the placement of the uh, new garage requires that it be extended that one foot into the setback. Okay. We have motion. I'll second that. We have second. Do we have discussion of the motion? There being none, all those in favor of the motion. Aye. Those against the motion. I'm sorry, it's for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it just fell asleep. Daydreaming. Yep. <laughs> okay. Right. See the planning department, they'll get with you and discuss your further actions that you may uh, partake for your garage. Other than that, enjoy it. <laughs> okay, we're going to move right along. Uh, application 2018-0008-174 Province Street. Applicant is requesting a variance for the design requirements 
for the parking area. Would the applicant please come forward and introduce yourself for the record and tell us how we might be of service. Please. Chairman, Zoning Board members, Steve Smith, Stephen Smith and Associates, I'm here tonight representing the Grace Presbyterian Church uh, in their property located at 174 Province Street in Laconia. Uh, we came before this board back in 1987 and got a special exception. to uh, 150 members in the church at the time it was constructed. Uh, they weren't at that capacity, so they didn't uh, build it to full capacity. Uh, we're back before the planning board requesting an approval to make an expansion here on the church. I have an existing conditions plan uh, on the board up here. And the pictures I gave you, the photo number one is the picture standing out here at the road, looking up into the site. This is 300 and some feet back behind uh, Province Street and behind the residents in that area. The second picture I gave you is a picture standing here into the site in this direction here so you can see what's happening there. The third picture is a picture of the church as it exists today. I took the picture standing about 10 feet off the parking lot uh, back towards the church in the parking lot. And the reason I took that is I mean, it's important because uh, once you get off the property, you know, you know there's a parking spot there, and I thought that was very important as part of the presentation to you tonight. Pitches five and six, I turned around and took them back towards the street, and these two houses that are located on the side of the hill. Uh, seven, I took a picture of my truck and, and part of the parking lot here in the wooded area, trying to show you the wooded area. So, seven and eight around the property. Uh, the other ones are basically of the church, nine, ten, and eleven. And then I have a picture looking towards the direction of the area of our concern, which is this wetland that's down in this location here. Uh, as you can see from the plan, it's quite a wooded area around the lot. It sets back a considerable distance from uh, Province Street. The about to the west, Lambert Cemetery. The abutter to the north and a little bit to the, I'm sorry, the abutter to the east is the cemetery. The abutter to the west and north is the city of Laconia. This happens to be the parcel of land that the, the building of dog, uh, oh, the dog on, park on off of the Grove Road. It's a fairly sizable wooded lot back in there. Uh, and then we have uh, Keter Court over here. Uh, a dead end cul de sac that comes in with these two houses that are basically facing where the church is. Uh, the house down here is 300 feet from there through the woods to the parking area. This house is uh, 245 feet plus or minus back and plus it's shielded from the church. All they see is this part of the parking lot. This property here is about 170 feet back but that can't really see anything relative to this. There's a big hill that comes up here, up and back down. These two houses back in here, one alongside the access road and one abutting it, they're 250 and 200 feet back from the parking lot. And that's the picture I took standing just about 10 or 11 feet off of the parking lot, back at the parking lot. So mm -hmm. you get off the site, you can't see the parking lot. So a couple of the conditions that we have in the property that are uh, subject to our design and what we're doing is this side over here is an extremely steep slope hill. Uh, under the steep slope ordinance. If we could, we'd put a parking lot over there, but it's not possible to do that. We have a wetland on the south end of the property, and we have a wetland on the north end of the property. 
And since we originally did this project, we now have a weapon setback, uh, which is 50 feet in this location and 50 feet in this location. We're here tonight requesting a variance to uh, Article 7, 235, 48G, uh, which is uh, relative to parking lot design under the ordinance, under zoning. Uh, and it speaks to, and I'll read it to you. It says, interior landscape areas, parking areas shall be designed so that no expanse of pavement is in a parking area exceeds 150 feet as measured perpendicular to any paved edge. Interior landscape area shall be a minimum of 170 square feet, a minimum of 10 feet in width, and meet the requirements of 235.42e. And that gives you the landscaping within that. Uh, what happens is our, put up the proposed improvements plan. Basically, in the same orientation. I apologize, it's not the same scale. It's a design, so it's been enlarged. You're looking up here at a 30 scale. This plane down here is a 20 scale. This is the church. This is our access off in Robin Street. This is the existing parking lot that's here. Our proposal we're putting an addition on the back of the church, and based on your parking requirement, you're required to add parking. We need to add this parking in here. And the two basic issue we have is we have this wetland on this end, we have this wetland mm -hmm. on this side over here. We have a 50 foot buffer. Uh, we're going to the planning board and asking them for a conditional use permit to be somewhat in the buffer on this uh, sign. Uh, and we're also uh, at the conservation commission tomorrow night to discuss that conditional use permit and back to the planning board for site plan review. What happens is the, the pavement expanse that we're dealing with is the pavement from here to here. This is less than 150, this is more than 150. So what it would require if we meet the design standard is that we'd have to put a 10-foot island here in this area and push this into the wetland area or wetland setback so it would only be about 20 feet from that wetland. Uh, we f thought that it would be more appropriate to protect the wetland in this particular case. We're in an area back here where the parking lot is only seen by the church itself. It's very well shielded from everybody. Uh, it's got plenty of trees around it. It's got plenty, I showed you the landscaping that it's done around the church itself. Uh, and it serves no real purpose for them. The other problem that we have is that this original design has a catch basin system that collects water in a pipe and takes it to the wetland down here. If we put the island here, we won't be able to do the other techniques that we're doing for stormwater treatment that have a better treatment, a better release, and it's a better job in taking care of stormwater management where we would be sheeting the water off this parking lot to two very long treatment swales down to level lip spreaders and then releasing it and then getting the treatment that we need instead of going directly into the wetland itself. Uh, what happens, and this one just shows that I added that parking area, that puts that, pulls that parking area in, gets us only 20 feet from the outlet of that wetland area, uh, and then we have this obstruction here where we can't sheet drain it anymore, now we gotta put catch basins in and just dump it back into there, can't treat it. This allows us to have that treatment. So we're, we've looked at it, we've talked to the planning department and felt that it would be best to, instead of putting the, that island in, that small island in that really doesn't benefit them, uh, doesn't really benefit the public at all, we think that protecting the wetlands as best we can is more benefit to the community, more benefit to the abutters than having that small landscaped area uh, within the within the parking area. And it says under <coughs> G1, it said, landscaping for parking shall meet the definition of green space, multifamily and non-resident parking areas shall have a landscape perimeter 
minimum of 10 feet wide. The purpose of the perimeter area is to provide a buffer from the street and abutting properties as well as snow storage. Well, we have that buffer there. Uh, we're still protecting the buffer, uh, the abutters in this particular case. Uh, we're protecting the steep slopes. We're giving as much protection as we can to the wetland area that's out there. And we believe those are our hardships in this particular issue is to, to try to protect as much of this thing as we can protect and still be able to move forward with our next phase, which we had planned on doing before. If there weren't any wetland buffers at the time. If the wetland wasn't there, the island could go in, we could do a different type of treatment, it would work a lot better. So we're asking for relief uh, to allow us to not install that 10 foot strip of green space. We're making up for it in our drainage study, our drainage treatment. It's been reviewed by Public Works. We actually met with them on the design before we designed it. So I think we're doing best we can in, in protecting both the neighborhood and the general public in this particular case and, and coming in here and asking for the variance instead of having more impact to the wetland. I'd be happy to answer any questions. If you were required to put that uh, strip in, it would also have to be irrigated too also, right? For keeping well, you, you don't have an ordinance that says we have to irrigate, but it probably wouldn't live very long if you didn't irrigate it. And that means you would have to tear up more to run irrigation stuff over to yep. it to make that happen and stuff also, correct? Yep. We, we think it, it's the best of two evils when it comes to trying to protect the wetland, staying out of the steep slopes, uh, still being able to enjoy the property and not impacting the abutters in, in any way, yes. I may be slow today, but what does what is the theory on having the um, island there? Well, I think mainly when we talk about commercial uses, they're mainly on Main Street. They're on the main drags. You don't want this expansive pavement that everybody's driving by. You get some shade trees there. It kind of buffers the view of the business that's there. It's not so stark. Uh, you can still see it, but there's some pleasantness to it. And that's for the general public, really. I mean, uh, if you talk with the people who own these properties and they put these landscape islands in, they become a nightmare as far as management of the property, plowing in the wintertime, getting the snow off. And uh, so there's a, there's a good side and an evil side. But I think mainly it was for those properties that are right out front, right on the main drag, so we're not looking at this expansive pavement. So we're not giving you... Um, uh, we're not talking about the amount of parking or anything else. The only thing you're asking is relief from this 10-foot island? That's correct. We, we, meet the, we meet all the design standards as far as the city's ordinance is concerned with that one exception of that design standard for that island. And we felt it was the whole process of doing it and treating the water is better and we get to have more protection on the wetland. I admit we are in the wetland buffer and we're asking for a conditional use permit mm -hmm. for that, which is allowed. We've minimized those impacts based on our design also. And this allows us to stay further away from that wetland. So if that expansion was a non-pervious or a pervious material, would you still, porous? if it was porous, porous material, then would you still need that? Or if it was like gravel, would you need a 10-foot? I guess that's an interpretation of your definition. And no, it's yeah. only yeah. because yeah. it's asphalt or the, concrete. The, the ordinance does not address that. It just says parking area, so I, I think you would need it. I, th I think Steve's description of what the purpose of this landscape island is designed to do was correct in that yeah. it's to break up the visualization when you're on the main streets. In this case, they're way back off the road and very well hidden. They're, they're, they're Given, given the overall project and everything else that's going on here, this is, this is certainly a very uh, legitimate. Uh, you have to look extremely ask. quickly driving down that road to even see the building in there. I showed you the picture of that. It's, we have that only 30 feet of right of way, the access into the site. Church is up on the hill. I don't think anybody even knows that it's there. I think all the times I've driven <coughs> by there, I don't think I've ever noticed. 
Yeah. Until I had to drive by to look for it, yeah. Okay, any other questions at this time? There being none, I'd like to open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public wish to speak for or against this application. Please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one wishes to speak for or against this application. Therefore, I bring it back to the board for any further questions. Any closing comments? Well, you told me I only had 15 minutes, and I, I didn't do as well as the first person. <laughs> but you're close. Uh, uh, with that, I'm going to close it to the public and uh, bring it to the board for discussion. It's extremely reasonable. All their buffers, the buffers already built in. The fact that it's so far back. The purpose of the ordinance really is meaningless as to this parking lot. So it's not contrary it's to not the, the not contrary to the spirit of the ordinance at all to the spirit of the ordinance whatsoever in and any way we don't feel that it would diminish the property values of the no. surrounding area the the uh, cemetery wouldn't feel yeah this is the thing we think this rise up in arms really the, the woods dead, behind the dead it, rise the dog, the dog park is not going to have an issue with the it dogs are going to have a problem yeah. okay so and none of the abutters were here to against it so. well, I'm close I'm just yeah. on the other side of Peter Court the, um, I didn't even know it was back there I, <laughs> we have met we met with when trust me we visited all the about us no I I live over on Spruce Street which is on the other side so I was saying I didn't even other than every now and then when you go up Province Road and see the sign, it was like, oh, there is something back there. <laughs> so, uh, and I'd say the little literal enforcement of it would be an unnecessary, unnecessary weight to their development, unnecessary cost, and not necessarily. And it would and be an unnecessary extra impact on the wetland area. This minimizes the. And the that's impact. the hardship part that's of the it. Hardship. Is the, this, that the fact steep that slopes on one. On we one have. side, the wetland on the other, yeah. Okay. And this would do, this would because minimize. you would have to reduce some parking in order to accommodate this, and mm -hmm. you would also have to unduly bring in special irrigation for for that so that they would be able to water and, that. Yeah, and there would be further impact on the wetland if you did that. So right. This, so this is the best. Fertilizers and stuff like this is that. the best result for. Yeah, so you'd have to add fertilizers and stuff, and then that would drain off, and, and yep. that's something we don't like. So, I'd like to entertain a motion. Sounds like everybody's kind of pretty much closely in agreement. So, um. I'll play. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept application 2018-000F. Eight. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. Eight. Uh, it's 174 Providence Street, and it's the Grace Presbyterian Church. Um, they're um, increasing. No. Are they expanding the parking, or are they just increasing the size of the church? Both. Both. Oh, okay. The application is just for the parking. Okay, application is just for the parking. And so <clears throat> the use for this proper, uh, the variance is not contrary to the public interest. This is a place that's off from um, the um, beaten path. Spirit of the ordinance is observed in that um, it's not going to alter the uh, essential character of the neighborhood. Uh, justice is done in that they're able, because of their increased uh, memberships, they um, are able to uh, increase the size of their sh church and make sure people are able to come. And so I'd say justice was done there. You're not going to diminish the values of the surrounding properties and little enforcement of the hardship well, of the um, would result in hardship because it leads to unnecessary um, development in the middle of a parking lot and you 
go without it, you're able to uh, treat your sheet flow more properly so that it mitigates the damage to the wetlands. I'll second that. So we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion of the motion? With okay. that, all those in favor of the motion. All right. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like any of these drawings back? No, I got them all. Do you need any for your next uh, area? They're for planning, right? <laughs> okay. We shall move okay. on in life. Uh, application. Uh, 2018-0009, 7 Pendleton Road. Applicant is requesting a variance to place the shed in the rear of the property, encroaching 10 feet into the 15-foot rear setback and 5 feet into the 10-foot setback. Would the applicant please come forward at this time, introduce yourself for the record, and tell us how we might help you. Hi. Good evening. Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Leary, and I'm just, it's the only feasible place that I can put the shed on my property the way it's shaped. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Could you move the mic up just a little bit? Sorry. Thank you. And it's the way the, sh the property is shaped and the way the house is set. It's the most feasible place for me to put the shed, but I don't have, you know, I'll be encroaching on the setbacks to put it, you know, far enough off to the house. I don't want to put it, you know, won't be able to put it right on the house. There's a deck there, plus my utilities. And that's, you know, it'll be constructed exactly like the house, same color, same shape, same style, everything. It will just blend right in with the. What is, what is the purpose of the shed? Purpose is for a storm, uh, lawn, you know, lawn furniture, the lawnmower, gasoline tanks and everything, so I don't have to have them in the garage with all that, you know, the odor and it's an attached garage, so keep it safer in the mm -hmm. shed. Put the gas tanks for the. Uh, what are the dimensions of the shed? It's ten by fifteen. What's that? Ten by fifteen. Ten by fifteen. Yes, sir. Is the is there a shed there now? No, oh. it's a brand new house. That's a brand new home. Yes. Now on this drawing, is this attached to the house here? Do these corners touch or no? Is this it's just a, the that's way not the scale. Is? I'm sorry. I just uh, he just said it would be nice just to plop it in there, just to see which side of the house you're planning on putting it. How how much separation do you plan on having between the house? It's probably about five, almost six feet. Should be able to drive the lawnmower through, right? Yes, sir. Put the tractor, you know, the snowblower through there and whatnot, and maintain the air conditioning and everything. All your utilities are on this um, southwest corner? Yeah, well, all the utility, like the gas tank, the propane is on the uh, the street side, the Route 3 side, and the, and the power is coming in that way. That's why, you know, and I wouldn't want to really have a shed sitting right on top of the gas tank, you know? Yeah. It'll be... Is that shrubbery between the two houses, is that the lot line? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you know, the little bushes there? Yes, sir. Yeah. The uh, hashed line uh, thing is the buildable portion of the envelope? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I read correctly, then you're, you're going to be close to your lot two side? Uh, do, 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 do. I'm assuming that's the rear of the house? Yes. Or is the lot oh, for the lot rear for of the, the house? Lot two is the back of our house. Lot two is the back yes, of the house? Yes, right, sir. Right, we're right on the corner. Okay, the so you're going to be 10 foot off of lot four. Four. Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, that I need to encroach 10 feet on the 15 foot rear setback. So you'll be five feet off of lot two. Yes. 
and five feet on the side set back of 10 foot. Yes. So you'd be five foot off the other Right, line. five foot right in the corner, yeah, make it in. So basically you'd be five foot on both sides. Yes, sir. And you're actually going to bring not be on the hash line, but be able to bring that in. Right, so it's not drawn to scale. It'd actually be over that over the line. Now, what's the setback between lot two and lot one? Is that a rear setback? And that should That's be a 15, yes. That's and what, the rear. Yeah, and the, how much is that? 15. 15. So, okay. Yeah. And so the side setback is? 10. 10. So it's five into the side between. Mm -hmm. No, there'll be five left on both, on both sides. On both sides. And that's the first house in the in this development? Yes. This is the well, first house. This is actually the second house. Second, because lot four. Lot four is the first 15 one. 15 Pendleton is the first they one. They have a shed yet? All right. Doing? And you really don't want to put it on the Endicott Street side? That's on the third one. No, that's why utilities come in. I have the utilities the come utilities into come there, in so there. that kind of creates a hardship there. Yep. Or, okay. All right. So, any so other questions of the applicant? So, yeah. lot two isn't developed yet? No, ma'am. Okay. And obviously, the developer was contacted as an abutter, and he didn't. Has he got a problem with it, I guess? No. We don't know yet. No. He was, he should have been. Yeah, Pem is listed. Peter. Since yeah. the other side, the, the side that's on Route 11, yes. uh, there are no houses on that side. Why wouldn't the shed go over on that side, away from that house? Because on Route 11 there, that's where our 500-pound uh, propane tank is buried. Oh. And that's where our electric, is, our electric is coming from, the corner of Lot 2 and our Lot 1. That's where the transformer is coming across the house. So I'd have to put the shed almost in the front yard. So they're not on your land, are they? What's that? Are the transformers on your land? Yes. They are? Yes. Is that it's underground it's service? Yes, sir. So that's the hardship. Is so the cable, awesome. so that comes from the corner of lot two and lot one directly diagonally right over to our house, which, and then the 500-pound tank is sitting right next to it. And then I got that big stone rock in the front, so I have... <laughs> You know. I wonder why they put that there. Well, they didn't have a machine. They had a machine big enough, but they didn't move it out. They thought it looked nice in the corner, and they asked us if we wanted it when well, we bought it, and I said, yeah, I like it. <laughs> so it's kind of like a landmark. Yeah. And if anyone decides <laughs> to come down the hill and lose their brakes, they're not going to hit my house. <laughs> so, and you're saying the shed is going to be constructed in the same... Um, it's going to look like... It's going to you know, look identical to the house, same colors. It's like Everything, shingles, okay. siding, windows. Any other questions of the applicant at this time? Okay. There being none, I'd like to open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public will speak for or against this application. Please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. Therefore, I bring it back to the board. Should we note for the record that the, the, uh, we have a letter from the director butter um, yeah. at 15 Pendleton Road who yeah. has no objection? Yes. That's what I was going to ask. Please enter that into the records. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to the board. Any other questions? Any closing comments? Uh, no, thank you. No. With that, I'm going to close it to the public. You may have a seat. Thank you yep. very much. And we'll bring it to the board for discussion. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to jump in here. This Please. is the first uh, This is the first of these buildings in this development that we have here. And it might be uh, advantageous for the builder to take into account if they're going to place or need these sheds because if we start right off and we um, take it right to the five foot you know give it only five foot of separation you're increasing the density and you're setting a precedence I think that that's true but if you look at the lot sizes of the other lots they're all a lot bigger so maybe it wouldn't run you know and they don't, have the, they don't have the utilities on 
have it on their lot. Right, running directly. That's the thing I noticed it. today when I was up there. That takes away that whole corner. You can't. You've got three corners actually taken out of play on this lot. That's why it's more unique. If you looked at lot four, lot four has the ability, uh, looking at from the lot one direction over, you have room to put stuff over on the right hand side of that piece of property there um, versus on lot three with all the detriments in those three corners or a lot one lot more one. precisely a lot one yeah lot one lot two without a house or lot three uh, lot three looks like it has the same abilities as lot four and lot two without seeing the size of the house or whatnot being in play. Well, it, they have the ability to position the house. As would this one also. And so you can be ready for one lot to that corner and then you'll have 10 feet between two sheds. But and lot five looks like it's a repeat of lot four. Yeah. So, you know, it looks like that's out of those five lots I could see here on the picture. That looks like the, the one that drew the misfortune. Lot, lot one and two are going to be the ones yeah, especially affected lot by, two. The, by the, well, lot two is going to have the same issue with them. Um, well, it depends on where they're going to put where they the, want to, yeah. where they want I would to just put say ahead of, time, ahead of time, it'd be something to consider. Yeah. Right. If they brought the house closer to Endicott Street where the driveway is, where the then driveway cut room. for it, yeah. then they would have room for that in the backside yeah. without in, impeding on it so you know I don't know if any of that can be thought of by the, from the planning board to them verbalized but there's opportunity to fix that in lot two lot one I don't know it got a big like rock. it was <laughs> you had a big rock and utilities so doesn't look like it's going to diminish the neighborhood in any way, shape, or form. Um, the hardship is of the location of the house versus the attachments of the rock in the one corner, the power stuff in the other corner, and just the um, <coughs> the other one would put it out into the road almost on the uh, the other corner by Pendleton Road. So. In this instance, it wouldn't. Does anybody feel that it would be uh, contrary to the? Uh, Not necessarily. Wouldn't values substantial okay. justice be done by denying it? Do, you, do we feel I don't, that? I that don't would, see that the public benefits. The public benefits by, by denying it. The public will not benefit. Substantially. Will not outweigh. The public benefit does not outweigh. In this case. So. Okay. Does anybody feel like making a motion? I'll make a motion to approve application 2018 for uh, uh, 10 by 15 new construction uh, shed uh, that will, um, once constructed, um, reduce the side and rear setbacks to five feet on this property. The um, variance will not be contrary to the public interest and the uh, spirit of the ordinance uh, is observed. Um, this um, this uh, uh, is a reasonable um, use um, on this lot and it does not um, affect the threaten the public health or safety or welfare of the neighborhood. Granting the variance would be do substantial justice. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a, uh, an accessory use to a residence. It's consistent with, you know, um, um, the, air, uh, the current use in the area and um, the uh, uh, benefit um, to the applicant is far outweighed by any negative impacts, impacts uh, to the general public. Uh, value value of surrounding properties would not be diminished um, and um, the uh, hardship exists on this lot due to the location of underground utilities and a large rock, a large rock. this is the only place on the lot that this uh, realistically uh, uh, can be uh, faced and so there's no benefit to the neighborhood and 
enforcing the ordinance under this circumstance. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Discussion of the motion? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Uh, passes. Please see the planning department if you need a permit or whatever other amenities uh, that you might need. Other than that, enjoy your shed. Thank you very much. We'll now start the application 2018-0010-950 Main Street. Applicant is question of variance from the setback requirements for parking. Limits on expansion of a non-conforming use and minimum setback requirements. With that, would the applicant please come forward, introduce yourself for the record, and tell us how we might help you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Dr. Paul McManus, and uh, this is my wife, uh, Catherine Zagroba, Dr. Zagroba. And I'd like to uh, thank you very much for your time and consideration of our proposal. Um, we are both optometrists, and we're practicing under the uh, banner of Winnipesaukee Eye on North Main Street. We've been um, uh, practicing professional eye care for, uh, at this location for 36 years following Dr. Richard Snow. Oh. May I stop you just sure. for a second? And for the record, I might indicate that I have been a patient of the doctor for uh, 16 years, okay? And I have no financial or no any uh, uh, association with this other than being a patient of his for my eyes. And uh, if anybody feels there's a uh, uh, an issue with that uh, okay I did have to say that for the record I do apologize okay. so please continue sure thank you so we've been uh, practicing at this location for uh, 36 years following dr. Richard Snow uh, who's been practicing uh, here since 1957 uh, we took over his practice uh, we're asking for a um, consideration for uh, building a new building in our current location at 950 North Main Street, replacing the building that exists now. Uh, we have had conversations with all of our neighbors uh, who are all supportive of this project. Uh, uh, Barry Bernard and Ellie McDougall to our north, uh, Peter and Heidi Bright to our west, and uh, Ali Hassan and Ajil Ferdos to our northwest, and they have all indicated their support and, uh, and uh, good luck in, in, in our endeavor. Uh, presently, we are looking for replacing the building to create a larger space, which will provide uh, increased uh, treatment availability for our patients. Uh, the space is needed for new and innovative medical instrumentation, necessary for keeping current with all new medical treatment modalities. Uh, our current building is built on seven different levels, uh, which makes uh, working in it a little bit difficult, but certainly we've had to be a little bit uh, creative when it came time to helping with our handicapped patients and handicap access. Uh, the new building will be built all on the same level uh, providing much easier access for elderly and handicapped patients and barrier-free access you know within the building uh, will make uh, access to exam rooms and restrooms you know right up to current standards uh, the new site design would uh, mitigate years of um, uh, old water drainage and flooding problems that we've lived with uh, due to the fact that um, 
the, the present site is not properly designed for drainage and for many years the part of North Main Street we are uh, practicing in has had uh, significant flooding which has been uh, mitigated to some degree by the city but still remains an ongoing issue. A properly designed parking area would also make for more efficient access uh, to the building. Uh, and uh, because we have been a business here since uh, the mid-60s at this location, practicing about 50 years in the same spot, uh, this location is familiar to all of our patients. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, we wanted to stay in Laconia uh, at that location because of that familiarity and, and, and uh, knowledge of where we are. Uh, we haven't really desired to move out of Laconia because it's been our home base for all this time, and we'd like to stay here. Uh, we also attract people from many areas around Laconia, around the Lakes region, as far north as North Conway, Plymouth, Thornton, Alton, Wolfboro, and Concord, all attracting to this area, uh, and it has worked out very well. Uh, in summary, we're not changing the, uh, the use, purpose, or activity of the building. We're just improving the physical uh, facility to improve access and health care for our patients. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to mention that Frank Yerkes is here if you have any questions about uh, site planning. And at this point also, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our uh, architect, uh, Sonia Mishazek. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for your time. Uh, as our first step, we reached out to the City of Laconia Planning and Zoning Department and have had uh, a few discussions with them, kind of going over what variances we need, what's the process we need to go through, and that's been very helpful. But to step back and just give you a summary of the existing conditions, the lot is located in the RS zone, so single-family residential. Um, it's very close, though, to the RA, which is directly to the south, so residential apartment to the south. And then if you go less than two blocks to the south, you're actually in the professional zone. So this is kind of the main thoroughfare. It's not like it's tucked into a little residential cul-de-sac or uh, a neighborhood, per se. You know, there's a lot of traffic that's going by here, and the zones change pretty rapidly along Main Street as you progress from downtown to the north. Uh, it is a conforming lot, both in size and um, area, as well as its dimensions. And it has an existing non-conforming use of professional office, uh, as Dr. McManus had explained. It has two existing um, non-conforming structures, though. The proposed plan uh, removes the existing office building, the office storage building, and the existing deck. It reorganizes the parking. Right now, the parking is kind of willy-nilly. There's no striping to it. It's irregular. Um, there's, as Dr. McManus <laughs> explained, there's drainage issues going on with it. Um, all that will be addressed once we go to the planning board, but we are proposing to organize the parking to allow for the required 13 spaces. Um, we're going to create an office that will have one floor level for the clients, uh, and have an accessible entrance. The new structure will be in scale with the residential zone meaning that it will not be a great big box, um, but the massing will be broken down into smaller pieces so it has 
uh, more relationship to the zones of the neighbors that are to the sides of the buildings. It will consist of dormers, windows, and elements that look like it belongs in the neighborhood that it sits in. So to get to the bottom line here, we're requesting three variances in order to make this project happen. The first is for expansion, expansion of parking into a setback. The second is expansion of a non-conforming use. The third is expansion into the side setback. And I'll take you through each one of these um, in detail in this little drawing set that we have over here. The first variance uh, is from Chapter 235, Article 8, Section 235.48, E1 and 2, Setbacks. So this deals with expansion of parking into a setback. And it's represented on drawing ZBA02, which is in your packet, but also on the diagram here at the top. Not certain if yours are color-coded or if only the one here is. OK, super. Uh, so the current um, relief for this section um, relates to setbacks for parking. Current parking spaces encroach into the easterly property line. You can see that the green is actually going over the property onto the neighbor's uh, property. So the existing parking is represented on the left side of your drawing in the gray shaded area and we're actually going to remove portions of that to move the uh, parking area that's designated completely onto the site for the eye doctor's office. We're also going to be pulling the parking back away from the main street. Right now it's going up to the edge here and there's no real defined sort of area for parking or people to come in and out of. So what we're proposing on the other side here is to actually pull it back so that there's no parking that's encroaching into the front setback. The parking will start at the front setback line and continue back into the site. The area that we need some relief on, though, is at the back of the site. So right now the parking is going to this green line but we're proposing to pull it back so that it is 18 inches off the property line. Uh, and then we need to expand it back because we're pulling this section and basically moving it here. So the blue area is the part that is actually in the setback. The rest of it is within our buildable area on the property. So if you take the green, which is existing parking, we're going to turn that back to green space and take the blue and pave that. There's actually a reduction in the amount of pavement that will be on the site designated for parking by 481 square feet of area. So the request shifts the parking spaces um, but would not increase the overall parking that's currently being used. It would reduce the non-conforming area by 481 square feet and the requested variance would also provide better public access and safety because we would have more visibility as people were coming and going out onto Main Street here at the front of the property. If it's okay with um, the board and the Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go through all of the variances and then... Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second variance that we're looking for is expansion of a non-conforming use. So this use has been in ex existence here. We don't have the ability to use the building efficiently because of all these different floor levels in it. And the way the floor levels work in relation to the grade and the entrances, it's just all over the place. It's not like we could put an elevator in and solve this um, with the seven different levels. We also can't raise the floor elevation to that highest level because then we would be above like an accessible entrance to get into the building. So we really don't have the option to uh, 
evaluate uh, modifications to the existing structure uh, to make it conforming. So relief is requested from Article 10, Section uh, 235.67B, limits of non-conforming uses. The property in the use is a lot of record in longstanding con continued use. We are requesting continuation of the use of the property with an expansion of that use. The current square footage of the proper, uh, of pro uh, property is 2,308 of main building and 282, or I'm sorry, 582 of the storage building for a total of 2,890 square feet. The proposed new building footprint is 3,320 square feet, uh, giving the proposed variance um, would be an expansion of 430. But the expansion is there's areas that we are not calculating in this because we can't access those um, in terms of floor levels in the building. We're just kind of talking about the spaces that are being used. Um, the proposed expansion, though, will become uh, less non-conforming with the removal of the non-conforming storage structure at the back. Uh, that you can kind of see in the area here. So this is drawing ZBA03, and the gray area represents the footprint of the existing that will be used as part of the footprint for our, the new proposed, and the blue represents the areas of expansion. I'll get into kind of how it's expanding in the next variance request. But the portion that's coming out for certain is this back corner here and the storage structure at the back. So the way this zone is organized is um, there's two different setback requirements. There's a residential setback and then a commercial setback in a residential district. So our setbacks are for this project are we're using the commercial in a residential district. Uh, which is the 25 feet that you see on the drawings here. And then I think it was, uh, there's also a 10 foot side that's allowed for parking. The, I give you this information because our last variance relates to minimum setback requirements. So this is for article six, section 235.35B, minimum setback requirements. So we are requesting relief from this section, minimum setback requirements, specifically at the north and northwesterly building envelope line. Overall non-conforming areas, 505 square feet of existing storage building, uh, plus 495 square feet of existing footprint um, building. So those are the areas that are shaded in red in the bottom plan here. Those areas are basically currently non-conforming and will be removed. So we're showing it all being removed here, but we're not giving credit for that section that is conforming there. We're not adding that into our calculations. What we'd like to do is take the volume that is on the northerly end and actually slide it forward to the setback. It will still remain in the side setback but will not encroach any further into the front setback. And the reason for doing this is to just try and create a face that relates to Main Street, but also to work with the flow inside the building. Um, they have an optical center and they also have a uh, professional um, like exam rooms for um, their clients to come in and use and a reception desk we can accommodate both functions by having sort of a central reception area here. So one could be optical and then the rest could be patient rooms. There is actually, if you take the square footage of non-conforming, so the red area here plus the red area here, there's actually a reduction of 580 square feet in terms of buildable area that is being pulled out of non-conforming setback space. Uh, the request, requested replacement, and we're kind of calling it replacement because 
we're taking this area and sliding it forward, but reducing it by removing the deck off the back. Um, it does not encroach any further to the side reference line. Uh, the requested variance will not encroach on the rear or the front setback line, and the existing non-conforming storage structure will be removed. Uh, we do have a letter from the neighbor to the north in support for this project, and I'm hoping that that made it to you. Um, let me just get my thoughts straight here. So in closing, um, like I said, the owner reached out to the neighbors. Um, they pretty much had no questions or concerns. They've seen the plans. Uh, some are in support of it in terms of actually coming forward and providing you letters. Our next steps would be to submit the project to the planning board uh, and submit uh, to the state of New Hampshire Shoreland Bu uh, Bureau for a shoreland permit because this project is located within 250 feet of the lake. Even though we've got a road in between it, it's still going to need a shoreland permit. And we feel the variances are reasonable requests, and we're here and happy to answer any specific questions that you may have. I hope that was somewhat clear <laughs> and um, concise. So I turn it back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. We have two different setbacks, Dean, that we're dealing with. One's a 25-foot setback, and one's a 10-foot setback. Correct. The 25-foot setback is an, an envelope that goes all around the piece of property on all four sides? Yes. And then the 10-foot setback for is only for parking, and that goes all the way around all four sides of the property also? Correct. Okay. And... So for you, the uh, on the non-parking side of yes. the side setback, it's just the little, that corner piece on drawing number 04, the blue, that is what's going in between the 10-foot setback and the 25-foot setback. Correct. It's the blue plus the gray area. Yes. The gray area is already existing footprint area. The blue is new footprint area, which is replacing a portion of the red. <laughs> but if this was used in residential, then the 10 foot setback would be standard if this was just a house or something. So that is correct. In theory, it would be in residential theory, it would be not including into the 10 foot setback, side setback. But because it's commercial, we're going to use a 25-foot setback. From a, from a density standpoint, in terms of what it would look like, it would it would it would be very similar to a residential type situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. And architecturally, it's my understanding the building will look more like a residence more than a uh, yeah an office building. And that's because we consider it commercial in a, is that what is designated today? It's a well, it's a non-conforming use, use, but it's classified as a uh, professional office. Okay. The actual use, but the, the zone is, is uh, single family. Single family. Right. So it was it had the <coughs> variance to use it as a... It has, it has the permission to use it as a... It's, it's grandfathered. grandfathered. It's grandfathered. Gra the use before is grandfathered. Yeah, before, zone, use. before zoning. For but professional use. In, in a residential right. zone. For professional use. Now, does professional use in itself have setback requirements? It's, it's a, considered a professional office, but it's considered a commercial use. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the commercial so setbacks are what it's... What applies. Okay. Cool. Any 
Anybody else have any questions? I'm just curious, just one. Are you totally tearing down the existing building and putting up a new one, or are you just working with what's there and expanding it? Uh, no, we're actually tearing down the whole, the whole structure, oh, okay. yes. And a lot of uh, site work will also be anticipated because of the drainage issues that go on. I mean, these folks have flooding into their offices. Um, it's just a bad situation. So there'll be a fair amount of adjustment that needs to be made, and there's just no way to, to work with the structure and the shell that's there. It's one of those things where addition got put on on addition, and it just kind of doesn't work well. Thank you. Now. Dean, a question, please. If the 10 foot parking, so, but we're only looking at parking spaces 9, 10, 11 for variance purpose? Correct, and because the. Why not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Because they're, they're existing and they're grandfathered. They're already okay. Dead. And they're actually making them less conforming because they're going to be pulling the pavement back away from the property line. Less That's non -conforming. non-conforming. Less non-conforming. Less non-conforming. Non -conforming. That's not what I said. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. We're listening now. Okay. <laughs> less non-conforming. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Not really. With that, I'd like to open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public wishes to speak against this application, please come forward and introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. We did have one letter. Two letters. No, just one for this one. Just one for this application. You just got one? One for this application. If there's a second one, it's possible. I'm going to say there is. No, this is for the other application. That was for the prior, for the Pendleton Road. Oh, Pendleton, Pendleton Road. Road. Okay. And so this one. is from uh, the Bernards. Mm. And they're in favor of the building proposal. Please enter that into the record. I kind of shrunk that into saying they're in agreement with it, so no sense going into all the details of it. Um, so with that, i bring it back to the board. Any further questions of the applicant? No. Any closing comments from the applicant? There being none, I'm going to close. With that, I'm going to close it to the public and bring it back to the board for discussion. I think it's totally a reasonable request, all three variances, and I think they um, will do a lot to improve, obviously, the business on the site and, uh, and also the character of the neighborhood. And uh, obviously, this is being done professionally uh, and with a lot of thought um, uh, of the impacts um, to the environment and so forth. I, I don't see any issues with it. So we don't feel that it's going to have any impacts on the surrounding neighborhoods, but value no. or anything? No negative impact. There, the the on changes any are of the three. right. They're they're so small. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, the changes to the yeah, the non-conforming right. footprint are small enough. Right. And I think that the changes to the new structure will be more in keeping since it's right on that cusp of more residential and business, it will, the new structure itself will look more appealing aesthetically. Okay. I can't remember a time someone's come in here and asked for fewer parking lot, par parking spaces you are, than they had you before. You were not conforming, yeah. So Mo the moving spaces, well, see, and that improves the safety as well because the spaces are being moved back from the street. So the variances that are being asked for tonight would be uh, uh, is not in con. It's not it's in the public. It's, it's not contrary to the public interest. It's not contrary okay. to the ordinance. Okay. It's in, in keeping with the spirit of the ordinance. It actually enhances public safety. It will enhance the value of the neighborhood. 
And so we feel that the benefit of the applicant uh, does not outweigh the harm or harm the general public in any way in making these modifications? Correct. Sounds like everybody's kind of like in agreement. Uh, anybody like to go forth and make a? So we're going to do three. We'll do three separate motions, and I'll, three I'll, I'll, separate I'll, motions. I'd like to uh, make a motion um, to approve um, the uh, first uh, request for um, setbacks, and um, in, in in order to uh, meet the criteria, I'd like to request that the. Uh, variance criteria submitted by the applicant uh, be put into the record as it was extremely comprehensive and explained the situation better than I could. Did you want that verbatim? Yes, please. Okay. We have motion. We have uh, a second. Second. We second. Have second. Discussion. There being none, although the in favor of the motion as is. Okay. That that motion passes okay we have the second variance um, same thing I'll make a motion to approve the uh, second variance and that was for non-conforming uses and once again um, ask that the uh, facts supporting this request be entered into the record to satisfy the variance criteria as as presented in the application second and that be verbatim also yes please okay and uh, so we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor. Okay, that variance passes. And I'll go ahead and do a uh, third variance, um, the request for minimum uh, relief for minimum setback requirements. And once again, ask that the um, facts supporting the request be included uh, in response to the uh, variance criteria, uh, they be submitted ver verbatim as proposed to us. Okay. Second that. We have motion. We have second discussion. There being none, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Enjoy your new office. Yes. Please see the planning department for your next steps and and. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your well prepared. Help. It was well prepared, yeah. so it's always Makes nice it. to They're nice easy. to get. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Other business that may come before the board. Any updates on anything that we're no updates. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Close. Close to the end. Didn't want to make Dean nervous. <laughs> Here we go.